So thank you very much for joining today and, take it, and taking the time uh, to join us for this conversation about digital sovereignty and how Google Cloud can help organizations in Europe in supporting their sovereignty requirements. My name is Jürgen. I'm a customer engineer focusing on sovereign digital solutions for our customers. So I want to uh, discuss today how we understand digital sovereignty in general at Google and how we approach digital sovereignty in the DAC region. And then we will have an outlook uh, on what we are also doing in the European Re Union regarding digital sovereignty. And after that, as you are developers and practitioners, I will also tell some stories about uh, or give you some information what is important to you and how to, what the best practices are for handling digital sovereignty. So then let's start by looking at how we generally understand digital sovereignty and then we take a special focus on the offering we have currently in the DAC region. So organizations in the world are using cloud services to drive their innovation. So security, scale, sustainability and innovation offered by cloud platforms is well understood by customers. But often in, in discussions we hear that they are wondering how can they balance these benefits with their compliance and sovereignty needs. So what is digital sovereignty? It depends very much whom you ask. There is no final definition, uh, but we can describe it as the ability of a state or an entity to regulate or exert control over data and technology operating within its jurisdiction. And there is a growing demand for uh, digital sovereignty that is rooted on a number of concerns. And these are mostly not technical reasons. And they include security and control. So the regulatory environment relating to the cloud is very dynamic. And we see the overall trend in the direction of global strategic autonomy and digital sovereignty. And when we look especially in Europe, there is a strong desire to, con to get control over cloud data and software. And we see this also expanding globally. And as you know, there are regulations like GDPR, um, Segnum Cloud in France, and initiatives like Gaia-X. And they all um, are doing efforts to define how cloud companies operate and run the infrastructure and how they host workloads in Europe. And there are also, uh, on top of that, economic reasons. And there's a strong desire in several countries to see local providers getting involved in supporting some of these initiatives in, in order to avoid, for example, lock-in, or also to develop and strengthen local economies. And yeah, not to forget to get more control over potential extraterritorial data access requests. And furthermore, third point, geopolitical demands. So policy makers, technical leaders, business decision makers um, have an interest in defining sovereign policies for their countries as they see more and more data migrating from on plane, from on plane to, uh, to cloud. And especially when we bring critical national infrastructure to the cloud, there is always a concern or a question of, a deg of the degree which they can trust the foreign cloud, uh, cloud provider or not, bringing their sensitive data uh, to the cloud, and, and therefore uh, they need to have strong guidelines. And keeping these aspects in mind, we will also take then a look how we already realized cloud on Germany's terms, and we will see which controls and services there are avail available today. So now, as we mentioned, achieving digital sovereignty can mean different things to different people. Uh, but one common theme we can find is control over your data. So data is the most important asset in the digital world. And we as Google believe 
Having strong controls is fundamental to meeting sovereign requirements. In our main mind, there are three fundamental control objectives, and these are data residency, personal controls, and encryption control. But, uh, da but data controls are just one element of a comprehensive digital sovereignty approach. And at Google Cloud, we therefore broken it down in three very clear pillars. So the first pillar is uh, data sovereignty. So what do we mean with that? Giving customers full control over their core customer content, their core customer data. And additionally, we want to provide the ability to store and manage encryption keys outside of GCP infrastructure. All done so that customers can protect their data while still enjoying the scale, the innovation and security of public cloud. And on, on top of that, the second pillar is operational sovereignty. Um, this gives the customer or a local trusted partner control access or a direct visibility um, on Google Cloud's operations. And they have also the ability to control the access for support personnel based on predefined attributes like citizenship or um, a particular geographic region. And this can enable more trust to, to the cloud provided with sensitive data. And last but not least, there is software sovereignty. And this is often referred also as survivability and means protection against unforeseen catastrophic events. And we believe at Google that software sovereignty and survivability can only be accomplished with a modern open cloud approach that is based on open source solutions. And this is why Google has committed very strongly to open cloud and many of our services, of work, our core cloud services are based on open source technologies. So how can we achieve this as, at Google? Yeah? So that there's a quite simple answer with, with local partners, with the help of local partners. And while we have already built a global platform with many controls and capabilities, organizations can use to meet their objectives for security, control, and transparency. Our goal is to be able to also deliver localized portfolio for digital sovereignty solutions by understanding the needs and the requirements for various countries and by partnering very closely with trusted local partners that help us to bring our products to, to the customers. So looking now at Germany, here we started a partnership with T-Systems that are offering now sovereign controls for Germany and the DACH market. And this is completely built on public cloud. And there was a long-term partnership established last year between T-Systems and Google to address a variety of sovereignty needs in Germany. And this is going from data protection, deep supervision of uh, cloud operations, and the capability to operate in also in disconnected scenarios. So the product is called Sovereign Cold, uh, Controls by T-Systems, and it provides safeguards over GCP platform controls. And this is happening by the implementation of data residency controls, local support and operations, and external key management and access control and access uh, transparency. In the future, T-Systems will offer additional controls like ad for identity management and also a security operations center. So looking into the data residency controls, the system uh, ensures customer data can only be stored in a German region, and also the services are restricted to be deployed only in this region by using a set of additional policies, but while still offering the integrated experience of GCP. Though this means customers will not see a difference, for example, in the cloud console or while using the services and consuming APIs. It just feels like using GCP. An additional control function that is implemented with sovereign controls by T-Systems is the control of delivery and of support and operations. That means support and operations Access are limited by underlying data access controls, and that's why automatically routed to 
uh, European Union persons that are also located in, in, in Europe. And additionally, the partner supervises access to customer data by controlling the keys needed to decrypt data. So they implemented a redundant external key management system outside of GCP infrastructure. So decrypting customer data always requires a call outside of Google infrastructure to get the external managed keys. And additionally, the customer can expect every request that is done to come with a justification. And the customer can also block requests programmatically for any reason. To get insights in this, the partner monitors access to get customer data and configurations by using access transparency. The logs document ad, uh, administrative access to customer data, providing the systems and also the customer with an audit trail of actions that have been taken and the scope of the access. And there is an option to require explicit approval before access to get customer data is granted. And the approvals can additionally be signed with the customer keys to prove it was really uh, granted by the customer. And sovereign controls by T system is available today, and we are we are starting the onboarding for the first customers uh, recently. And currently, there's a bunch of services launched like GKE, cloud storage, cloud SQL, and obviously key management and logging, what we uh, need for the solution itself. And there's, it's hard work, so it's a long roadmap, but we'll, we'll launch uh, more and more services in the future in the Sovereign Controls product to offer more and more services for digital sovereignty over the time. So having seen what is, was happening in the DAC region, let's also take a look what, is, what types of solution we can generally offer in, in the European Union. And how we have already started implementing them in countries in the European Union. For partners and customers there, we can offer three options. Our sovereign controls product allows you to define the location of your core data, who has access to the core data, and the control of cryptographic keys. By the way, we think without all these technical, con all these technical controls, you don't have data sovereignty. And Additionally, the customer can choose to apply uh, GCP's core platform controls such as DLP to de-identify data or um, confidential computing to encrypt data while it is in use. Then on top of that, we have the part partner, management, uh, partner managed sovereign solutions um, that adds the ability to, to the partner to monitor and control Google access uh, to data providing both visibility and control over operational elements. And our supervised cloud offering, when available in the future, will be fully managed and operated by partners, supporting data and operational sovereignty needs for specialized and highly sensitive data. And lastly, for situations where there is a strong need to have less reliance on the software provider, our hosted cloud offering will support software sovereignty and allow for air-gapped and disconnected operations without provider software or support. And we do this in Europe in conjunction with uh, well-trusted partners. So I talked already about the systems, but we started already an in initiative uh, in France. Together with Thales, we founded a um, joint venture that is called SANS to offer cloud on Europe's terms for French customers. And yesterday, I think, in the keynotes, we also announced uh, new partnerships in Italy and Spain. The offering is called Local Controls by Source and is now available in preview and builds also on Google Public Cloud Services. It supports then the requirements for data residency, access control, local support, and builds a foundation for sovereign workloads in France. So sovereignty in a connected world is not an easy task. But uh, I think we as Google have understood it's important. And we have engaged in a long journey to deliver this. So cloud of, of Europe terms 
as a set of carefully tailored solutions put together with local partners to preserve the original value of Google Cloud, but deliver in a way that is acceptable for our cu global customers, starting with Europe. And having seen what is happening in the DAC region in Europe regarding digital sovereignty, I want to talk now about what topics are important to know for you and interesting as a practitioner or developer. So first, sovereign control is not a fork of GCP. It has the same code base and it offers you and the customer integrated experience. It builds on the known public cloud services and you can use and develop all the tools that you already know. The APIs are, aren't, un uh, aren't changed. And if you look at automation, you can deploy the whole infrastructure with Terraform or similar tools. And if you have existing uh, scripts today, you can just reuse them. And what we see is a big chance for innovation. So sovereign controls and this, our sovereign cloud efforts give you as a developer the basis to create compliant solutions depending on the customer's needs using services that you already know. To finish it up, I want to talk about some best practices and considerations. So first, understand the customer's or your workload requirements. So one solution will never fit it all, and it's important to distinguish and understand what is needed for your use case, your application, and the data involved. That will prepare you to make the right trade-offs when it comes to choosing technology solutions. And there is a chance, I, I, I was very often talking about sovereign topics with customers in the last months, there's a big chance that the customer thinks or the business unit thinks everything must be in, in a sovereign environment. And if you look at the data and the use case itself, you will always find that only a part of this data needs sovereign solutions. And the distinct other part might still run simply on public cloud. And second, think about yeah, how hands-on you want to be regarding operations. Understanding how to plan and manage operational complexity is key to deciding how to handle sovereignty with your cloud provider and whether it may make, it, uh, whether it may make sense to work with a trusted third party. And lastly, think global, think big. Think about your business needs for the future to understand the right path for your digital transformation journey. I am currently also working with customers that have requirements regarding sovereignty in France and in Spain and in Germany, and then it's uh, getting starting to be inter very interesting. Yeah. Keep this in mind. So thank you very much for your attention. I will be around for questions, and we are happy to discuss with you. And we have a break now before the change. Um, and after, this, uh, after the break, I think we have the productivity uh, works, uh, developer workstations um, session by Alexis. Thank you very much. <laughs>